The Downtown Rams podcast is brought to you by our proud sponsors, Rams on Demand, Seat Giant, Throwback Joe, and now our new sponsor, Kayvon Webster's new L.A. food truck, Vibe 305, from South Beach to Sunset. Hashtag catch a vibe. For more information, check out Vibe305.com today. Now enjoy the show. 35-30, Robert Wood, first down 20, 10-5, touchdown, L.A. It's a blinding light underneath the dirt down. No, it's Goff who keeps it, and Goff goes crashing into the end zone. Sixth Street Bridge. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there and comes away with his third sack of the afternoon. Not immediately in sack. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. When will you save me? Todd Gurley, 20 10, Gurley for MVP, touchdown LA! And he gets gobbled up. Savage has to eat it as Michael Brocker picks up the sack. He picks the Kenilroby coming. He's decked by Stoop. Stoop. Touchdown, Brandon Cooks. For the first time since 2003, the Rams are NFC West champions. Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. This is episode 129, and Joe, it's actually going to be my birthday episode because I'm going to turn 23 in 18 minutes, so pretty awesome. You ruined the surprise. I was going to wish you a happy birthday. I was all excited to spring it on you, Oh, but uh, I guess you know it's it's not a surprise because you know it's your own birthday, so. Yeah. But you understand what I was going to say. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so Happy birthday, bro. I appreciate it, man. I pre- thank you for uh for for joining me on my birthday. <laughs> Some party. Some party. Yeah, right. Um <laughs> well, well, we'll make up for it when I'm in LA. So anyway, um the Rams made some moves and people are asking me who they are. Who, who Who's the guy that they claim? Um, well, they claimed cornerback Darius Williams off waivers from the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens cut him in favor of the reinstatement of their star cornerback, Jimmy Smith. Darius Williams. Joe, you saw what, uh, you saw what Mike Cahill tweeted, our, our friend Mike tweeted, right? No, t- no, what was it? Tell me. So... He ended up tweeting a pretty cool looking, uh, you know, those, those number grabs that he does. And it was Mm -hmm. on Darius Williams and Darius Williams had the third highest coverage grade among 2018 cornerback draft class with at least a hundred cover snaps played 91.1. The two players ahead of him. Josh Jackson of the Green Bay Packers, second round pick. And the number fourth overall pick, Denzel Ward of the Cleveland Browns. So, (laughs) this guy, he might start off as a special teams guy. But I think the Rams got a Blake Countess-like steal where the Eagles actually drafted him in the fifth round, I believe. And they tried to grab him and then when they they caught him um, he he didn't want to sign to their practice squad so he signed with the Rams Mm. so the the reason I say Blake Countess like Steel people will you know say that's not that big of a deal it actually is Blake Countess has now been on the roster since 2016 and he's been a contributor and he is one of what four safeties on this roster right now Blake Countess is a good player. Darius Williams, however, he's 25 years old. He's from UAB, which, for those of you who don't know, UAB is the program that was basically killed. Um, they they were going to scrap the football program, and then they brought it back. Um, it's the reason Gerald Everett, the yeah, South Alabama say, tight Everett. end, yeah. he, uh, he transferred from there because they were told that it was over. Um, J.J. Nelson of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, the uh, the speedster in the combine that many people know about, that is where he came from. So, yeah, UAB, well, he didn't really get a, a, a combine opportunity or anything like that, so he kind of fell, but he's very athletic. 
and he made an impression. And by the way, watch the the Rams and Ravens film, and he looked really good in that. Yeah. So, you know, from, yeah, from preseason. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, first impressions are big. Obviously, you know, these guys have their boards, they have their priorities, they scout these guys. The Rams had to have been impressed by the first impression that, uh, you know, Darius Williams made against their team. I mean, that was the first yeah. preseason game of the season. And, and the joint practice, too. Don't forget, they had two days where they were practicing with each other. Exactly. So, obviously, uh, they, they've got, a, I'm sure, a ton of film on him. So, when they saw him come across the wire and you, you look at uh, where the Rams are at the cornerback position right now, which, as you tweeted out, Troy Hill being the highest-graded cornerback all the um big splashy moves the rams made in the the preseason and um or the off season and, and they're uh, right as of right now seemingly right back where they were at the end of 2017 with uh, you know troy hill being their their best corner um you know certainly uh you know with sam shields um you know the worries that he's not going to be able to hold up to the physical right rigors of a of a starting situation, you know, he's probably better as a reserve. So if you can get kind of a young athletic body in there, um, you know, to, to play some snaps and to add to the mix and reduce the load on um, what is kind of a beat up position. Um, when you consider they lost Kevin Peterson for the year with the, with his injury, they, um, you know, they've had obviously to leave is on IR. They hope he'll return. Um, Peters, depending on who you talk to, is either playing hurt or just um, out of sorts right now. And uh, Shields is hurt. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, – they need to make a move, and and uh, it sounds like it's good news that they got somebody they like. It definitely is. And, and you can tell they like these small school guys, Joe. Um, you know, he wasn't a senior bowl guy, but – they like their small school guys, and it, it didn't surprise me that they got him. But the the thing that I find funny is people are like, is he good? Well, define good because, one, he's in the NFL, so there's that. But, two, this guy was playing football at UAB, didn't get a combine invite, and makes the 53-man roster as a UDFA guy for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, talk about a harder defense to make. I mean, those guys, half the team is from Alabama because of the, you know, the ties with Ozzie Newsome. So it's, uh, I thought it was impressive that, you know, he, um, he made that 53 and there's no way that the Ravens wanted to cut him and lose him. They, they wanted to bring him on the practice squad. And what often happens in the NFL is sometimes a team values this player more than you do it's kind of the rough decision you have to make you have to cut somebody it, it, it's like if they cut him maybe two weeks ago he's probably stashed on the practice squad but because yeah. they cut him right when the rams are having all these issues at cornerback there you go now he's a ram he's on 53 and there's no connection anymore to the ravens so you make that find you, you risk losing somebody like that you know letting him go and the rams found this out uh, with Jamil Demby, so right, of course. You know. But another guy they got, and Joe, I was a little surprised by this because the the Rams they um, they ended up losing Evan Beam to the Colts. The Colts have a center who's injured. Um, I, I forget his name. It's uh, yeah, it's not coming to me. Uh, yeah, starting center. Yeah, and he's got, like, broken vertebrae. Like, it's bad. Um, Slauson, I want to say. Maybe. All right, keep going. Anyway, broken <laughs> vertebrae. He They uh, they grab Evan Beam right off of the Rams practice squad. And so anyone that was following last week, the Rams had to release Aaron Neary due to that rule that, Joe, I think you're more filled in than I am. I, I didn't really understand it that well. Uh, you know, I, I understood it when I when it was explained to me, and now it's kind of – when you have 52, when you're carrying a certain amount of, of players on your roster, you can't have um, – 
Oh, uh, you can't. Uh, you can't have ten practice squad guys or a certain amount of practice squad guys with the experience level. So you know they had to cut them just for the weekend, and um, and so that uh, you know, and then that's why we. I didn't kind of make a big deal out of Neary getting cut because we kind of expected that he was going to join back up with the team on on Monday. It's kind of the way that Miles kind of announced it, you know, because he's he obviously works for the team, so. Um, you know, he kind of, um, you know, laid it out saying that, uh, you know, because of this rule, uh, they had to, they had to cut him and, and it just kind of made it seem like, you know, he was going to be back, um, at the beginning of the week. So I didn't even really, I may not have even tweeted about it because I, you know, it's kind of meaningless to say, oh, this guy, <laughs> they cut. They cut Jake on Friday if they're just going to sign him on Monday. It's just shuffling papers around, I guess. Yeah. It kind of shows how Seems silly Seems like a silly rule. Are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally silly rule. Totally on the same page there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so they, they bring Neary back, and they also sign former fourth-round pick, highly scrutinized fourth-round pick, might I add, um, by the New Orleans Saints, Rick Leonard, who was cut from the team. He's been a free agent since the cutdown day, and he's an intriguing guy, Joe. I don't know how much you know about him, um, but I, I did look a little bit at his tape. I wasn't thoroughly impressed, but then when you really think about his backstory, you have to understand, this is exactly the guy you want on a practice squad. This is exactly what the practice squad is for. Rick Leonard is a former defensive end, so... He he comes in as, you know, defensive player of the year for his high school or whatever. He gets picked up uh, by Florida State, um, and then he goes to Florida State, and they ask him to switch the offensive line. In his 2016 season, I mean, he winds up starting half the games at right tackle. By his 2017 season, he starts all the games at right tackle. He becomes their right tackle. Now, fourth-round pick, way too early, I'll say. But he's got a lot of tools. He's very athletic. It's just a matter of feel for the position, and that's going to come with time. Again, he was just a defensive end not long ago. Um, now, you, you, we can see the the bad um, of this you know, the the effect of it not working out. Remember TJ Clemmings of Pittsburgh, um, former defensive end, switched to offensive tackle, and he just hasn't panned out. It's going to happen, um, like, two players. But Rick Leonard has a really good offensive line coach, obviously, and Aaron Cromer that's turned Austin Blythe into a freaking uh, all-pro overnight. Uh, <laughs> so... You know, I, I like this. I like this move. This is somebody that I want to just kind of marinate on the practice squad, and then maybe next year he can uh, he can challenge for a role on this uh, this roster. So a good pickup by the Rams. Definitely liked it. It, it. You don't risk anything by doing it, and it's a practice squad move, and you get a former fourth round pick on your practice squad. So I think it it helps. Right. Um, yeah, I think you should always have. Um, you know, one or two offensive linemen that you're kind of bringing along as like an investment on that P squad. Um, So, um, yeah, I'm trying to find the exact rule about the Neary thing. And um, it's, it's, if the, if the active roster is more than 53, you can't, you can't have a third year player. um, (laughs) And I'm like, well, why is the active roster above 53? Was it was actually somebody was lower on a, than 53. Lower than 53. Okay, so the, okay. That's what I thought. It was, somebody had said 52. But it's silly. And, um, <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, it doesn't make much. Third, I mean, really, it's kind of third year, second year. Who cares what year? They're on the practice squad. They're learning. You know, anyway. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's about as silly as having, like, inactives, healthy inactives. <laughs> like, yeah, there really shouldn't be. Yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, why, why do we have inactives when you're talking about, you, you know, Aren't they just technically practice squad and... players that get to show up at all the games? That's right. I, I, mean, I mean, it blows my mind. They really should just be active. Yeah. Be inactive. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But you know what else is ridiculous? 
The Rams getting flucked out of their Sunday night game. Are you kidding me? No, I understand it. But what did you say? Did you say flexed out or did you say something else? Flexed out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said a different F word. No, uh, no. Uh, I didn't think uh I didn't think it was I mean the thing about it is I understand the rest of America doesn't want to watch the Niners. And I wouldn't want to watch the Niners at this point. We've talked about how beat up they are and every every time you know, the Rams are playing and the Niners are playing at the same time. All I see is an unending tweet, you know, tweets from people that cover the Niners about how, you know, so-and-so got hurt and they've lost this guy. And they've, you know, it's like, there's how much water can that ship take on? Um, you know, so I, I think at this point it's probably better. Uh, obviously the Rams want to be on, want to be in prime time and want to be, um, you know, Rams fans want their team to, you know, everybody see how good their team is. But, um, you know, I don't think anybody want, wants to see a blowout. Um, and I would love those other Niner games that are on primetime, scheduled for primetime at this point, to be flexed out of there as well. Um, so, you know, it'll be a it'll be a late game up there and, uh, you know, one o'clock game up there on a Sunday and, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't. Sorry if I'm stealing your thunder, but uh, again, it has nothing to do with the Rams. Nobody want, wants to watch the Niners in prime time. So I have three things, Joe. First thing. <laughs> <laughs> First thing. Start allowing flex scheduling for Monday Night Football. No excuse. You should you should be able to flex schedule the the Monday Night Football game. We have to watch the 49ers versus the Packers mm-hmm. this weekend or, or or this Monday. So, no. Second, yeah. last year, there was a legit game. I, I would I was just saying this with my father the other day. You could make the argument the Eagles-Rams game was the biggest game of the entire football season last year. It was going to completely change the landscape of the NFC. And that game didn't get scheduled. Flex schedule. Well, was, they wanted to keep it. It was because Fox wanted to keep it, right? It was, yes, it was but such a big game. They did a little it's, deal, but Sunday Night Football still had the the push pull thing. Anyway, the Rams they don't get the flex scheduling there, and keep in mind they were kind of in a little bit of a a pickle as far as getting uh you know primetime games because they were so awesome, bad yeah. the year before. So this year they get five primetime games. Somehow the Forty ers get like four. And or I think they got five too actually, and yeah. that was the complaint. Like, how did the 49ers get as many as the Rams by many fans? And then it's the Forty Nine. Jimmy G is good looking. <laughs> Everybody wants to see Jimmy G. And then it's, it's the Forty Nine so that screw the Rams over to the the Coles there, and and it's and, just one game. The Forty Nine ers are going to screw everybody else over by having to watch them on Monday Night Football. Yeah, that's, but no one. That's going to be brutal. Oh uh, yeah, well, yeah, I. I also got to say this. C.J. Beathard threw over 350 yards last week. He, at least he's not a dink and dunk boring guy. Like, he, he's going to go down the field. Like, he may not be great. He did get a lot better than last year. And they have nothing, they have nothing to lose. That Their season's already over. Yeah, it's, I know. The NFC West is already over. It's, what was the great – that was the tweet of the week. Was it um, – uh, JB, who went in and found the odds, um, found the the Pro Football Outsiders, um, you know, the odds that the Rams were going to be A, the one seed, two, get a bye, three, win the NFC West, four, I forget what the other one was. And it was like the odds that they win the NFC West is like 97%. Nine, oh, make the playoffs. Was it 99% chance that the Rams are going to make the playoffs at this point? I think that's what it was. Ninety-seven huh. percent chance that they're going to win the <laughs> NFC West. Wow. They're five and zero, oh and they have a three-game lead. We're five weeks in the season. It's early October, <laughs> and they've made the playoffs. Ninety-nine percent, Jake. <laughs> it's ridiculous. They had a, a, a above fifty percent chance of having the number one seed. I gotta see this math. I'm gonna double check this math. Do you feel like the Rams have a above fifty percent chance that they're gonna be the one seed in the NFC? I do. As long as here's the thing: as long as everyone like, I'm not gonna say everyone well, stays healthy, 
but it for the most part, if this core stays healthy, you know what? I'll just say this: if Jared Goff and Todd Gurley stay healthy, this and, team will be the Drew number Whitworth. one seed. Yeah, you know. Um, all right, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. I, they have so many big. I mean, there's so many good. You're, we're talking about um, you know primetime games. There's so many big matchups left. Packers. They go into the belly of the beast with the Saints. Yeah, uh, Saint, you know, they they obviously beat the Saints at home last year. Going to New New Orleans is I mean, that's probably the one game on the schedule where um you know, where I would kind of pencil in an L at this point. But um, you know, I think the rest of that, you know, we get so many good Eagles and um uh, help me out here. Oh, the Bears game is all of a sudden. That's the game that should be flexed. Up, you know. Oh, out. I tweeted so, that. I was like, "All yeah. right, all right, NFL. As long you know, you just owe us the Bears." Yeah, the Bears now. game. It's gonna be fun because the Bears and the new Rams. Have you heard this? Everyone talking about the Bears is the new Rams. And wait a second, the Rams are still new. It's just it's just, <laughs> just happening. How can you have a new Rams when the Rams the Rams are like you know a year and a half into their their new era? Come on. Yeah. Well, the Bears have the best defense in the league right now. I don't know if you can really debate that, especially after Mahomes picking apart the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. And I'll also, I'll say this, the game before that, uh, the the Rams, they, now I'll say this, they, they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I don't think they'd be able to do it because that would be three back-to-back-to-back Sunday Night Football games for the Rams, but... Oh, would it? Uh-huh. The Lions Rams game could be because it's it's Forty Nine ers Seahawks. I mean, the Lions. But nobody wants to watch the Forty Nine ers and the Seahawks. They just played to a twenty seventeen game, didn't they? Oh no, that was the, that was Arizona. Yeah, no, yeah. no one wants to watch it. I, honestly, I wish they would start. Like, I know I, I get the rivalries and everything, but the Rams and Saints should have been, uh, you know, a Monday night game or a Sunday night game. Like, they they need to use those matchups, like. The the rivalries are going to get really old really quickly, um, especially you know the Seahawks are probably going to hit that. Although they looked a little different, you know they looked like they're not ready to go away yet. But I don't yeah. know. That's just my that was take. the last. Like, that was the uh, that was the last flail of a uh, of a former uh, champion. I think we'll, we'll see what happens to Seattle, but I don't think they have enough to to keep this up. I think they're going to, well, they're two and three and I think they're going to fade. I, there's not another team. This division's not going to have another team in the playoffs. And no, I think it's I, well, highly think, unlikely that, that they have another team above 500. I think Arizona is going to catch some fire later on in the year. Cause Josh Rosen, I think is going to really gel and, and this is still a work in progress. Rookie head coach. I, I think Arizona is a team to watch for later on in the year. They're going to be like fighting for a six seed. Um, they've started off kind of poorly. Wow! But hot take. Well, I've you're saying of, Arizona's I've saying gonna it. fight for a play, playoff berth? Wow. Yeah. No, I, I I like them coming in the year, and I'm not backing down from them. But um, yeah, those are our overall thoughts on the the flexed out game. I'm kind of heated. Um, just because it's like you're flexing a game week seven, really. <laughs> but uh, but no, um, I understand it. Anyway, Brandon Cooks, Cooper Cup likely to be available for this Sunday, so that's awesome. Um, also, Joe, uh, my boy Kaderil Hodge, shout out to him. He got a catch on uh, Sunday. And uh, your boy, J. Ray, Josh Reynolds, um, he made me look stupid for dropping him in Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you should have traded him to me. Uh, well, you picked him up, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so now this is the meat of the podcast. This is the Rams, the Broncos, the preview. And, yes, I'm going to have those X factors that people were, like, literally cracking up over. Uh, apparently, I was really into it. I don't know. Um, so key matchups. Joe, we'll we'll do what we did last time. We'll give uh, three key matchups. Um, you know, you can go first or I can go first, whatever. Um, it's up to you. Do you want to go first? Um, no, I mean, I'll, I'll, let me just give you my thoughts on, on the game. I mean, I, um, I watched, uh, that Jets Broncos game and, um, 
I, mean, I think they, they, they started out really strong. They looked really good. I think the thing about this Broncos team is that um, they're pretty balanced. Um, they've got a lot of decent players, a lot of good players. And I think they just lack you – know, they don't really have something that they can kind of hang their head on. You know, they got Case Keenum at quarterback. They've got the old remnants of what used to be a great receiving core that's kind of getting older. And they've got, you know, Cortland Sutton. And, the, you know, they got a, a young guy who's coming up. And they've got these kind of past-their-prime guys that are – kind of expiring and the, the back, you know, they've got, uh, you know, the, the running back um, you know, that was highly invested. They highly invested in Royce Freeman, but the kid out of Colorado is probably better. So, you know, they've got all these pieces. Um, and then defensively, you know, it's kind of the old remnants of that great Super Bowl um, winning defense. That's kind of still can on its day, still perform and, and still get after the quarterback, but, you know, isn't, as strong as it once was. So, you know, they're kind of in this weird position. I, I don't, I can't quite figure out whether or not the Broncos are rebuilding or kind of, you know, still in the, in the decline stage a little bit, you know, the, cause they, um, you know, they don't have their new quarterback yet. They're, they're you know, so they're, they're kind of, um, I'm not quite sure if they're, if they're, you know, sinking or swimming really. Um, so, you know, in terms of this game, I think the, the, the real interesting thing, you know, if the if the to me, the biggest matchup of this game is kind of, you know, the Southern California Rams against the elements. Uh, you, you heard Rich Hammond of the um, uh, if you were listening to the press conferences, today, Rich Hammond was asking a lot of questions about playing and weather and the elements. And, you know, I think that's really, um, you know, that'll be a uh, it'll be interesting. We, we haven't really had a ton of opportunity for the Rams to, who have, you know, to have been practicing out here in perfect conditions and then going to a cold weather, um, you know, situation with ele- with elements. And if there is snow um, in October, that would be amazing. Um, but you know, I, I think that that'll be a pretty good mental um, mental challenge, mental hurdle for the Rams to go from you know perfect to uh, to difficult. And um, you know, in terms of the matchups. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, the other thing I'm interested in seeing is is how this uh, kind of beat up secondary um, attacks uh, Case Keenum, and um, you know if if Marcus Peters is able to bounce back, if he's going to continue to be, you know, um, you know, kind of, uh, he, it's almost like he's, um, um, you know, I feel like uh, he's in a slump, or he's just making mental mistakes. He's not really locked in, so. Um, that's really my, um, you know, what I'm looking for out of this game is, um, you know, and I think offensively, I think, uh, um, you know, we'll see um, if this offensive line can continue to keep Jared clean, uh, you know, against that front, because I think that's, you know, the biggest, um, you know, X and O key to this game is to continue to keep um, Jared clean. They, uh, you can tell they're going to come after him. We talked to Vance Joseph today and he, uh, He's talking about how, um, you know, you could, uh, you know, if if they don't, you know, if they play like they played against the Jets, this team can embarrass us. He actually said that. So, um, you know, I think he's really trying to kind of shake his team up, wake his team up. And, and this is a turning point for the Broncos because, uh, you know, they lose this game and they go to two and four. Um, you know, they could really go in the tank. So this is a, a big spot for them, too. You know who's what game this is huge for? This is huge for um or what team? This is huge for the Chargers. Like the the Chargers cuz well think about this. If it yeah. gets to say like a tiebreak or whatever, wins yeah. in common games, like say the Broncos beat the Rams, well the Rams beat the the Chargers. So, you know, it it could get down to that and I'll tell you right now if, if the Broncos lose this game, the Chargers have a chance to kind of take off and really compete against Kansas City because Kansas City is about to face the Patriots and they're about to face the Rams. Um, not right away, but they're about to face the Patriots and they're going to face the Bengals. So we'll we'll get a feel you know, for how real the Bengals are. Um, and I think they're, they're a pretty good football team this year. But, you know, I thought it was funny, Joe. I, I don't know if you saw on Twitter, but um, Russ Crenshaw, uh, our buddy Russ, he – posted uh this it was like a, he had this tweet and he like screenshotted all these different articles and it's like the sky is falling in denver right now 
Like, yeah. the, we just lost to the Jets. So he posted four articles. It should be. And it was like... You lose to the Jets, that's the way it should be. <laughs> he posted four articles. It's like one of them is like, should we fire Vance Joseph right now? Another one was, uh, should Chad Kelly be starting? Um, like, it was oh, it was bad. Like, it's like... Dude, if you re- I read through their press conference. Um, you know, the Broncos send, are sending us their, you know, the, the Denver side of the press conferences. And I'm reading through it, and... It, Vance Joseph is getting grilled. No wonder he came on the conference call with us and was like, you know, if we don't wake up, you know, this thing could embarrass us because, you know, they are grilling him in Denver. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was, it, you know, it reminded me of a few years ago in LA. It was that, uh, that rough. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it doesn't look good for Vance Joseph, but you know the reason it doesn't is because Joe, this this team on paper looks really, really good. I mean, they they have all the weapons for Case Keen. Uh, That's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, you know that the the offensive line I, I think looks pretty good. Uh, you know, drafting Garrett, drafting Garrett Bowles for your left tackle, I thought that was a really good move by them. And then, you know, obviously the defense, I, what is your issue on the defense? I mean, maybe the fact that Pecco is starting for you. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. They have a lot of talent all over the place. Um, it just, I don't, it's just not coming together, I guess. So, it's, it's, it, but so it's they still got Chris Harris, right? They still got Chris Harris. What are they doing at the other corner? I didn't notice that. Like what? Why was Robbie Anderson torturing that secondary? Well, it's uh, it's Chris Harris Jr., it's Brad, Bradley Roby, and oh, then Roby, they right. have Pac-Man Jones, and... Yeah, um, he's hurt, yeah. Yeah, so. he's hurt, so it's uh, the the kid from Boston College, um, Isaac Yadam, oh. or Yadam. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so I think, um, you, know, the, the, you know, they moved on from Tlaib to save some money, and I think, you know, that's... You know, been an issue for them. it's a shame that Tlaib's not healthy for this game because you know that would be a huge storyline. We're kind of robbed of that storyline with him being on IR, but um, you know neither team's going to have him. But I think you know I think both teams are kind of feeling the effects of not having a key to leave in this game. So I think that's one way that if it's not too cold out there, I think um, you know you, you could see both quarterbacks have um, pretty good days. But um, yeah, it. Um, I was watching that game. I was like, how is Robbie Anderson torching Denver? <laughs> was, oh, wait, no. It was ridiculous. Well, how is Isaiah Crowell running for over 200 yeah. yards on you, well, as well as adding over 100 total yards for uh, Bilal Powell? I'll tell you why. Yeah. Denver did not make adjustments. I watched that game twice. Mm-hmm. Denver, they were like, oh, we're good. First half, we're good. Everything's good. Second half, yeah, they look good. They, First quarter, they, they stayed pretty the good. same. Yeah. They just went about the same way. They didn't make adjustments. They didn't take into a fact that you know, look, they have a rookie quarterback. They're not trying to put Sam in harm's way. They want him to be able. If if they need him, he can step up to the plate. But they'd like to you know run this football and and win the game on the ground. And that's what they did. And Denver let them do that. I mean, that was over three hundred yards of rushing. Uh, yardage. I mean, it was it was brutal. Um, but you know that, that's how I feel about that. I think Denver is in for a. I think it's going to be a tough game uh, for the the Rams and, and Broncos. I think this game is going to be uh, this is going to be a fun game. You know, the Rams I think have a seven point advantage. Um, I think that's what I saw. I like that. Um, I think the the Rams probably end up winning by ten. I'd probably say at this point be 31, 21. Um, the elements are important. It's not really even about the weather necessarily. It's about the altitude, I think. And you know, oh yeah, that's it, all. Yeah, it's another thing. Yeah, you know, it's a tough I, place to win, man. Yeah, I don't think people are talking about that enough. Um, the Rams don't, haven't played there since what preseason with with Sam Bradford. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like uh, when's the last time they played in Denver? <laughs> yeah, good point. You no, know? it's a tough place to. Uh tough place to get a win and um you know it's an interesting kind of scenario with the elements and the altitude and a team that's kind of fighting for its life like you know i i think they are going to get um you know the broncos best game and you know i think it is um you know going to be a potential 
barn burner. I think it may be similar to that Seattle game in which, you know, you really got your best shot from, from that team. And the Rams probably got to get used to, uh, you know, getting the best shot from, from teams. Cause I, I think that, you know, when you, you know, the, the Rams were, you know, kind of an underestimated team for a long time. Now all of a sudden they're the Super Bowl favorites of the team that everybody wants to emulate They're, you know, um, things have changed my friend and, and, uh, you know, they got to pre- be prepared for that. Yeah, they, they definitely will have to be. And, you know, I was um, starting off the, the key matchups. I'll just say real quick, and then we'll we'll, we'll get down this, this yeah. line of uh, questions and whatnot. I, like I said, you know, Denver has a really good offensive line. I think one of the interesting matchups will be Ronald Leary against Aaron Donald and likely uh, Matt Paradis, the, uh, the center, because um, he does get double teamed quite a bit. Garrett Bowles against uh, Samson Ibukam, maybe. Um, I, I think that'd be interesting, as well as, you know, maybe uh, Indomitian Sue versus Jared Valdir. Connor McGovern, people don't realize th- this guy, Connor McGovern, is one of the highest rated guards in the I think he's the highest rated guard in the league, and then it's uh, right after him, it's Blythe or it's vice versa. But anyway, he's one of the best guards in the league right now, per Pro Football Focus. He'll be going up against, uh, you know, Michael Brockers. So, you know, those will be some interesting matchups. And then, you know, on on the uh, in the secondary, you look at, you know, Bradley Roby, Chris Harris Jr. I'm not sure who they're going to match up against. It's kind of hard because, you know, the Rams have just too much talent that I don't know if they can fairly match up, um, you know, with their corners. I mean, you know, you're talking about probably Tremaine Brock or Isaac Yadam um, at, you know, four – you know, Cup or, or Woods or, or Cooks. Um, and then that's not, you know, including the fact that on the, the Rams side of the ball, I think they have the same issue. Um, you know, Denver has Demarius Thomas. They have Emmanuel Sanders. They have Cortland Sutton, who is a matchup nightmare as well. Um, they have Deshaun Hamilton. So I think the Rams and Broncos both have receiver groups that are going to keep the secondary busy all game long. Um, in short, that's what I would say. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think on the other hand, um, you know, obviously uh, it seems like they're, despite some scares last week, the Rams have no ill effects. Sounds like, uh, certainly sounds like Cooper Cup and uh, Brandon Cooks are going to be um, cleared to play or certainly are expected to be able to play. Um, we, saw, we saw Brandon Cooks at a fundraiser on Monday, uh, locally. And he looked normal. He looked fine. And Cooper, uh, was supposed to be there as well. And I don't think he came. So, um, you know, read into that, whatever you, you want, but, um, you know, I definitely feel like, um, you know, uh, the Rams are going to be at full strength offensively and, and that's good news because they're going to need against this defense. Oh, they absolutely will. Um, this, this defense is going to be tough. Uh, this will be a test for the offensive line, which is right now could arguably be the best offensive line in football. Um, going up against Bradley Chubb, going up against Vaughn Miller, Shaq Barrett, Shane Ray, you know Todd Davis. And they have a lot of guys on this defense that are really talented. It, it, it'll definitely be interesting. It's going to be, um, you know, something. For, but at the same time, you know, the Rams are going to give the Broncos talented offensive line, something to work with. It'll be a fun game. I mean, I personally, I think the Broncos are better than two and three. Um, I had them, I think the third seed or the fourth seed in the playoffs coming into the season. I was really high on them. Um, I, and I don't think, you know, Case Keenum started off slow, but you know, since when did we start crowning teams and, and calling teams busts, you know, in what week six, I mean, I don't think Denver's done. I don't think the sky's falling. I think Denver will be in it until the end. And this game, even if they lose, you know, I know two and four isn't a great record, but even if they lose, you know, this is still, I think, a talented Denver team that can get it going. Um, Vance yeah. Joseph might be all in the back, but. All right. Well, one thing I, I, I do want to ask you, uh, I'll jump on, I'll uh, kind of, un- I'll do this unannounced. Is what do you think of Philip Lindsay? Um, you know, because he's kind of a, a different sort of back. So Philip Lindsay is a lot like 
what I think Austin Eckler did to the Rams. I think that's what he can be for the Broncos. At the same time, I just I don't understand what the Broncos are doing in regards to Royce Freeman. Phil Lindsay's talented, but the Rams aren't even you know using like John Kelly, who John, I think John Kelly is. I would argue John Kelly's more dangerous than Philip Lindsay in open space, and they're not even like making him active. I think Royce Freeman, a guy that is now he's averaging over five yards per carry. They need to actually treat him like he's the number one back. Um, hmm. I think they've lost games because, frankly, they've tried to. They went with Lindsay in the, I what was it, the Monday Night Football game against Kansas City. They go with Lindsay up the gut. Is that the at game the he got ejected? Line, yeah. And he gets completely I, stuffed. And it's like, see, why do you have Royce Freeman? That's a good comparison to compare him to Gort to. Um, to uh, what San, uh, what the Chargers have, let's call them San Diego. Um, you know, because I do think uh, Lindsey's kind of an Eckler type back, where he's explosive. He can find some open space. He can gash you with a, you know, it's like a change of pace back. But it is kind of dangerous to use him as an every down back. He's, you know, you may not have the size for it. You're going to wear him down. Maybe he's not as good between the tackles. He's surprisingly good. Um, between the tackles, I just don't know if that, something like that's going to continue, or if he can be kind of, um, you know, consistent between the tackles. But he, you know, for a guy his size, um, he, he does kind of open your eyes. I just, I, I think he's kind of unusual. That's why I asked you about him because he is kind of unusual. And they're starting to use them both in the same backfield together, which harkens back, you know, to days gone by of, you know, having, you know multiple running backs in the same backfield and you do a couple different things with him and um but yeah Royce Freeman has been uh kind of um put on the shelf a little bit um and I think they you know they they got to figure out a way to use the two of them together yeah I I mean I need Joe I need my own podcast episode to like yell at head coaches that are (laughs) wasting talent I mean like Royce Freeman's barely being used and they're losing games by one possession or, you know, obviously the Jets game was more, but I mean, what does that tell you? Maybe if you used Royce Freeman and his five yards per carry, maybe you might've milked more to the clock and you end up winning the game. Um, the Miami dolphins right now with, with Kenyon Drake, what are they doing? Like <laughs> it, it blows my mind that the most efficient running back in the league last year towards the end of the year, the last part of last year, he was more efficient than Todd Gurley statistically. And it's like he was turning in this superstar, and that's why they traded Jay Ajayi in the first place. And now it's like they're not even using him. So I, I don't understand what these these uh, coaches are doing. I mean, you know, I totally get the Rams aren't even playing John Kelly because Malcolm Brown is that good. Uh, Todd, yeah, Gurley, Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley isn't going to get off the field in a game that matters. Yeah, hundred percent of the offensive snaps last week. So. Yeah. yeah, if it's if it's a blowout, you'll see a lot of Malcolm Brown. But if it's a game where they're going to have to fight and claw their way to win, they're not taking Todd Gurley off the field. There's no need. <laughs> yeah, they paid the get. He's got to earn his money now. They paid him. They paid him the money. Todd Gurley's got to earn it. That's the other thing. Oh, here, here's another topic. Um, defensive line. The snap counts have been super high. You know, uh, Aaron Donald's almost playing 100% of the snap counts, which is a huge increase from past seasons. What, what do you think about, um, you know, those decisions? And do you think it's affecting the way that they're that they're playing? Um. Yeah, I, I definitely th- – I mean, he. you could make the argument he's not as fresh, although you don't really see it. Um it's part of the reason why, you know, the, the Rams have gone out and they've gotten guys like, you know, Kendall Lankford and William Hayes and, um, oh, let's not forget Nick Fairley. Like, Dom Easley going down was a significant loss because he can play in the trenches and he can play on the edge, as you saw. I mean, that's what they're missing. You know, they're missing a Fairley to come in and spell Donald or, or Brockers or Sue. Like, that's, I think that's what, you know, they are missing. But I also got to say, I don't really know. I mean, the inactives are just obnoxious, but it just seems ridiculous to me. Like, you know, they can't get 
any of these guys really go. I mean, like, Ethan Westbrooks has one of the worst grades in pro football focus. And then when you watch the film, you're like, okay, it kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, he, he's had – he had a sack, I believe. But, I mean, he's uh, – he just doesn't look very good. He's not getting off I, – I wonder if he's playing injured, I'll be honest with you, because he did suffer that injury in preseason. Um, mm. But – I, I don't know. It's kind of like I want to see somebody like Sebastian Jost Day get his chance. I, I want to see. I want to see why they kept Tanzel Smart on this roster. Like, show me why he made the roster over Omarius Bryant. Like, prove it to me. Like, why did he do that? Like, now I want to see him in action. And it just, you know, it, it it's hard to see right. these guys where, you know, I'm not saying that the defensive line's getting picked apart because they're not, but. It, it's hard when you have all this talent and then it's like they have to be on the field the entire time because you now all of a sudden you don't have a rotation anymore. I mean, that's also what happens when you lose a Morgan Fox or, um, you know, the, the Dom Easley injury, uh, just, you know, all different things. But, you know, I, I thought it would have been beneficial to keep Omarius Bryant. I thought he made a lot of sense for them and he played well. Um, yeah, I liked him. Yeah. I, I, I thought he played well for them. I, I was surprised he, they cut him. I mean, he I, – again, I don't understand Tenzel Smart at all. Um, and that's a guy I really liked out of Tulane, but he just didn't look that great um, his rookie year. And then, you know, looking in the preseason, it looked like he got worse. So, you know, I, I don't know. I just think I'd like to see more Sebastian Joseph Day or by more just like more than zero snaps on the season. And, uh, yeah, just maybe, you know, give these guys a little bit of rest. They were doing it great with Todd Gurley. Like, they literally took him out an entire series because they, they were comfortable with the way they were playing. And um, it, it was against the Cardinals, and they, they had Malcolm Brown, just and he they couldn't stop him. So, you know, I, I like things like that. Obviously, you can't give guys like the quarterback a break. I mean, Jared Goff needs to be out there for every play. But, um, no, I, I definitely see what you're saying. I, and I think it, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Um it, with with the linebackers, I think they should do more rotational. Um, I gotta tell you, and and this this is the thing that um, will kind of get, you know, it won't get noticed because people only notice like you know big hits or you know box scores. But <clears throat> Mark Barron played really bad. Like he was out, he was out of position, and that's gonna happen. He's coming off injury. But you know what I do in that situation? Maybe don't have him play almost all the defensive snaps. Maybe throw in Micah Kaiser. I mean, I don't understand how you have the play of Micah Kaiser in the preseason and how much they, they loved him and they drafted him in the fifth round, the way they talk about him. And then he's not even playing and it's going to be week six now. Like I want to see somebody like that get involved. Um, You know, you got to try some of these things and we wouldn't be talking about this if the Rams are blowing teams out and the defense looked as good as ever, you know, like the Cardinal game. But the fact of the matter is now this is two straight games in a row that the defense has given up 30 plus points. It's not a major change. You're just basically seeing like, let's see if we just add a rotation to the linebacker spot. You're not taking Corey Littleton off the field, but you know, maybe spell Mark Barron on certain plays and, and, you know, put in Rameek Wilson or put in a Micah Kaiser, uh, maybe Bryce Hager. I, I gotta say, I want to see more of Justin Lawler. Um, He's only played three snaps this year, and three of those snaps, he looked great, <laughs> but it's only been three. So I want to see more of him. Uh, Trayvon Young I'd like to see. I don't know. It's just it, doing the same thing over and over again doesn't really make any sense. So why don't you just give you know some of these guys an opportunity, and you'll know whether or not it's working pretty early on, and if it's not, then you can pull the plug. It's the, the beauty about the NFL. That's just my take. Oh, I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was having this whole conversation with you, and I was muted. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, all right, cool. No, that's uh, good job. I think that was that's probably the best place uh, to end. Uh, I think you wrapped it up real strong there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> You're, not getting out, You're not getting out. You're not getting out of here that easily. <laughs> I won't fake that. The uh, you know. The couple things I said while I was muted were the smartest things I've ever said. So we can just move forward. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So 
last thing, uh, the X factors, and I'm gonna turn into an obnoxious. I I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just gonna be obnoxious for a sec. So Joe, it, it is X factors time for the Rams Broncos preview. Are you ready? You are so ready. You are absolutely ready. You know why? You know why you're ready? I'll tell you why you're ready. Gerald Everett is about to drop two touchdowns on the Denver Broncos. It's coming. It's your guy. It's happening. Look, Cup, Cooks, they both got hurt. Let's not rush them. Let's ease them into this game. And they're going to do that because Gerald Everett is going to put a 14 on the board for the Rams. I mean, you know, with the help of, you know, Cairo Santos and all. 14 points on the board. Rams get off to a great lead with Gerald Everett. I like that. I'm going with it, but I'm going to ride this wave. I'm going to keep riding. And guess what? Corey Littleton is going to pick off Case Keenum. It's going to happen. Corey Littleton continues to play better and better and better each week. He had the best cover grade of any cover guy for the Rams last week. He continues to improve each week. He has the most blocked kicks now, or, or blocked uh, punts, I believe. Uh, what was it? Um, I, I think uh, JB Long tweeted it. it. It was in the last two years or whatever. Four. Four yeah, he's, years, he's yeah. got four. So Corey Littleton is going to pick off Case Game. It's going to happen. Oh, but I'm not done. I'm not even close to done. Well, remember like LaMarcus Joyner when he was like an all pro and then all of a sudden this year happened and he kind of just fell off the face of the earth and looks like he doesn't belong all of a sudden. Yeah, I expect that to change pretty quickly. LaMarcus Joyner is going to have himself a game. He might fly all over the field. He might end up with 12 tackles. He might end up with a quarterback sack. He might force a fumble. He is going to have a big game in this one. It's coming. It's going to happen. Look out for that. And then my last key uh, X factor, um, and and keep in mind, these can be anybody, Joe. So I'm going to say this right now. You know who's going to play. It's going to be JoJo Natson. JoJo Natson's going to be back. And JoJo Natson is going to take one to the house. It is going to happen because I said so. And there you have it, X factors. In case you didn't understand a word I was saying or I was too obnoxious for you to care, it was Gerald Everett, it was LaMarcus Joyner, Corey Littleton, and yes, I threw in a bonus one, Joe 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 Nelson. Nelson. Eat your heart out, Joe Curley. (laughs) (laughs) I think we're going to change the name of X Factors to Because Jake Said So. (laughs) I think that's that's probably more apropos. Oh, my God. All right. Cool, man. All Uh, right. Good job. That does it. I, I, you know, I have to go into a, like a different character when I do that. I, I'm like, I'm I like it. mad. This poor microphone. Is we're gonna, probably, like, scared we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna stick with that uh, new segment. I think it's uh, you turn into like Lewis Black for like some sort of ranting and raving lunatic. But I love it. Well, I think uh, I think we got to see Angry Jake once in a while. Yeah, we get, well, 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 we'll see Angry Jake if they want to flex out another Rams game. Oh, <laughs> trust me, I will be on here. I'll be calling out the NFL. <laughs> uh, well, that does it, guys. Uh, for Jake Allen Bogan, he's Joe Curley. This has been episode 129 of the Downtown Rams podcast. This is birthday episode. This is October 11th episode. So you, you'll you'll remember 129. Also, it's it's like it would be Eric Dickerson if you just shaved off the one. So you know, that's another one. Um, so before we let you go, you guys definitely want to check out our uh, our friends at Downtown Rams. They have their own podcast. It's called the Ramblin' On Podcast. You can check it out by searching the Ramblin' On Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. That'll be coming to Spotify pretty soon. It should be already there, and uh, that does it. So thank you guys so much, and we'll be back uh, pretty soon uh, to talk about the conclusion of the Rams and Denver Broncos game. So enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the game. Take care.